Hello, how's it going? Welcome to episode number 11. This episode is going to be all about motion capture. You're probably wondering, what's up with this uh, new look here? Well, this is my new office studio, I guess. Now that we'll be doing these videos weekly, constantly, I thought I need to get a little bit more um, acquainted, a bit more relaxed. And uh, the, other, the other office or the other workspace was not big enough or comfortable enough for me to work for long hours, so this happened. In this episode, we are going to be talking about motion capture. Because I just released something about Star Wars Battlefront that it was all to do with motion capture. We'll talk about it a little bit. And I decided why not make this episode all about motion capture. So we are going to have an interview with Mark Jackson, which is a legendary technical animator. He works in these tools called Red9 that make your workflow with motion capture so much easier. I'll be showing you guys that. And I'll be showing you guys how to actually create a simple run cycle in motion capture that will better you guys and hopefully take your game to the next level. So that's a lot of stuff in one episode. I hope you guys are ready. Join me and let's make this happen. I work for DICE and I work in a game called Battlefront uh, Star Wars. Most of you might know this. This, uh, this game actually kind of uh, has proven to have like a really loyal fan base. And um, it's incredible to me to see everyday fans really sticking by this game and kind of just devoting their time to not only play the game, but to give us feedback constantly about the game. So we released this new hero that uh, the animation team, including myself, have been working on called Count Dooku. And uh, the reviews so far have been really amazing. I think those hardcore fans that stick to a game on IP for a very long time are the ones that ultimately will either make it a success or not. To see people so invested in getting a game back up and being amazing and supporting it 100% is really inspiring to me and just makes me work so much harder. I decided to make this episode all about mocap because that's what we, the animation team, used to create this hero. And over the years, I've learned of ways of doing things a little easier than perhaps uh, you might find if you just started to clean up mocap. So I thought maybe it's time for me to actually kind of help you guys so you guys can see how I do it. And if it helps you out, then great. So because I decided to do this episode all about mocap, I decided to contact my good friend Mark Jackson. He is a technical animator. If you guys don't know what a technical animator does, it's basically create the tools and pipelines for animators to animate. So the more streamlined that process is, the better it is. And one of the best by far technical animators that I've ever worked with is Mark Jackson. So it's a pleasure to have him here in the episode. So that's what we're gonna do first. Here it is, quick interview with the legendary Mark Jackson. All right, Mark, thank you very much for joining us here. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time. People don't know this, but we go back, way back, and to a company called Eurocom. If you maybe can take us a little bit about how you started, because I know you are, you started as an animator and then things kind of spiral down into technical animator, right? Yeah, I started out as an animator at Eurocom. So I started out as cutscene animator for Bond Nightfly. Yeah, yeah, then I was cutscene lead, looking after Spyro. And then after that, um, I was lead animator for Athens. And, and that was the one really that started co all of the code. That's kind of where most of the tool set stem stems from. All of the mocap songs that we wrote, all of the way that we do stuff stems from Eurocom and stems from that. So yeah, persuaded the directors at Eurocom it would be a really sensible idea to make an R&D department. So I spent, um, what? eight years running the R&D department. And that that's why Eurocom could turn things around so fast, because the rig, it was a few buttons, you know, and it's a consistent rig, which means that the animation could be shared across previous projects. I got out of Eurocom two months before Eurocom went bust and joined Crytek as animation director, well, animation technical director. And really that was that was the biggest kickstart for Red 9. They didn't go bust, but there was all sorts of issues. We all know that. We won't go through it because uh, <laughs> sad times, but, sad times. But, but we had fun. Any, yeah, they didn't do anybody any favors, and and basically we all walked out. And I came back on the basis that you know what, I'm going to do this for myself. 
And so did Franco, the, the, the other partner in uh, Red Nine. He was at Crytek Frankfurt. Uh, they were going through the same thing. And we both said, look, let's just do it. We've been talking about it for years. Let's just do it. And we've been doing it ever since, four and a half years. Now. And just solid coding, solid coding, solid tool support, solid rigs, the core of everything, all the core APIs in Studio Pack, and then all of the really nice bits go to Pro Pack, but Studio Pack is still very much supported and used. You actually released uh, the, the, the Studio Pack first, and, and it was free for a while, and Studio it still Pack. is. It's, yeah, it's open source. It's all on GitHub. You know, it, it's there's no smoke, no smoke and mirrors. It's it's there. Uh, it's on the exchange site, although that build needs rebuilding because it needs to support 2019, and it's about a year old. Do you actually yeah. kind of uh, have plans to get the Pro Pack uh, available for everyone instead of actually being like studios only? Yeah, yeah, we do two different licenses. We do a node lot and a light and a float license. Um, we also do a freelance license. So if there's freelancers out there, you know. And um, and how many are you at Red Nine right now? There's, there's two key guys. There's me, myself and Franco who do 90% of the code. Um, and then we have a team of outsourcers that we pick and choose dependent on projects. That's it. You know, we're a, we're a small student. And, and the, the thing about that is that because we keep the code small, we know each other's code intimately and we can fix bugs. The wrong idea that people have sometimes is that uh, because you have a free tool, maybe the developer is getting enough support, enough to actually kind of just <clears throat> keep on doing the work. But the reality is very different. It is, yeah. I mean, it, we're a small team. Um, we do primarily games, but we're also doing VFX, bits of VFX. Here's a good question: the source of the name Red Nine. I know the, I know, I know why it's red, <laughs> and only people from Eurocom would know why it's red. But can you please explain? <laughs> uh, God, yes. So it comes, it goes back to the early days of coding, and it used to be just myself doing the stuff for um, Athens, and they were all called Ginger Tools because back then. Believe it or not, I used to have red hair. And the icon for boot, Ginga Tools, was a picture of me going with a stupid smile on my face and bright red hair. When I started doing Red Nine, it was a little bit under the hood and I couldn't really be associated with it. And red, you know, it's like, can't be Ginga, so it'll be red, hence red. I don't know where the nine came from. It was just kind of seemed to work quite nicely with it. On this video, I'm actually covering mostly just like the basic tools. I'm actually going a little bit into animation uh, redirector. That stuff, I have to mention just quickly, is the stuff of wizards. I don't know exactly how it works. I just know that it's magical. It's incredible. It, and it doesn't slow down my mind either. I don't have a fast computer and it's just, it's, it's incredible. Re redirect is one of those things that I always wanted to do. It was a, it actually came up as a request from Cloud Imperium. Basically they had a, a sequence for one of the videos, one of the, and there was two people that went to be walking down a long, long corridor having a general conversation. And of course the mocap studio hadn't got that volume. So they walked them around in a circle and the request was, how the hell do we straighten that out in a way that we not spend, you know, weeks doing it? And, and the direct is kind of where that came from. Uh, since I'm actually covering just the basics this time, would you be able to join us again for another video to just explain a little bit more about ProPack and exactly what each tool does? Coming from the mind of the creator, I think, think people will understand him so much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Means. You have always been a person that I always admired in the industry. I think uh, you are an evil genius. And uh, it's incredible how much knowledge you have. I've just been around a long time. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I think that's what it is. I've been yeah, around a long like time. Uh, your tools, like they're faster than Autodesk's. I don't know exactly how you can you make things fa bake faster and like track faster. It's just, it's incredible. I still don't don't get it. I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, thanks a lot, Mark. Appreciate it. And uh, I guess I'll see you next time. All right. I'll talk Thank to you, you soon, soon, Mark. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed the interview, it wasn't too long. Uh, just to give you an introduction to Mark, he and Franco and his team, they have been putting so much work into these tools over the years and I've been using it since the beginning. I don't think I could work without them because they are so integral to my pipeline, to my personal pipeline, uh, that I feel like I just need to have Red9 as soon as I go into a studio, a new job, I open up my, uh, one of the first things that I do is like install Red9. So I hope you guys uh, feel the same way after I show you guys how to actually use them because uh, they are pretty magical. So this is what follows next. Let's clean this mocap and get it all sorted. So when you install Red9, this is what you're gonna see. Um, 
you're gonna have like a, a little icon here on top where you can uh, get all the red nine tools on the free package is the animation toolkit so if you actually click on here you're gonna get this module here let's go through some of the options here the snap transforms this is very interesting so if you actually have uh, it doesn't matter if it's a locator you can have the locator anywhere but as soon as you select the parent you select this locator and you go snap transforms you basically will snap this locator to this place and you will actually kind of update that information in world space which is very handy so now locator is following the wrist pretty cool track and stabilize is the tool that i use the most out of, out of them all like this foot here so in order to actually kind of keep it locked in the position that we want we need to actually get it into position that we want let's say we want the foot to be here in this position and stay here for the duration of the time that the foot is on the floor and we know that the foot will stay on the floor for this long so if we actually select the time range and select transforms and rotations and press this button what will happen next is that the position of this key of the first key will get copied to every single other key that you've highlighted like so so now you have a really stable foot you can also do, do it over time without using the time range and untick the time range and just go process forward until you see that the foot starts rolling off and then at that point you can just let go and then you have pose manager this is a very sturdy very well done uh, pose manager the animation curve editor which is also known as a butterworth filter it's really useful to actually clean up data another thing that i use quite a lot that is actually free it's the uh, interactive curve filter imagine the fact that uh, you have something that it's very either dirty or too long or you have too many keys and you want to simplify the action because uh, you need to kind of um, maybe work on the data obviously working on this amount of keys doesn't make sense because there's way too many keys and it's actually what most people um, end up doing they end up just going in and just deleting this bit and deleting this bit and this bit and deleting this and then eventually have something you can work with and then you can move it about and stuff so instead of doing all that what you can do is actually use this tool and select the range that you want to simplify snap to frame otherwise you get half frames and then you can actually resample your curve to instead of having one key every frame you can resample it to have less keys here we start doing the uh, animation redirection um, it's one of my favorite tools out of the red nine um, that has come out lately um, so it's pretty simple uh, you basically just uh, select your rig and uh, you create a little path and um, when you build a simple redirector it creates a dummy at the beginning of an end of your path and uh, you make it live and you start moving your whole scene with just one locator up and down rotation until you get it just right once you do you just have to apply and delete guides after you apply so here I'm actually trying to center the character in the middle as much as possible because I need to make sure that the character is right in the zero and is running as straight as possible so I deem it right at this point uh, I think this is pretty much center as much as possible with raw mocap so I feel like now I can just start working on making my loop better this one here is an important step I'm actually copying the Z information of my hips into my main controller pasting it and then I'm actually creating a formula here after I paste my data onto the main controller and the formula is uh, divide equals 
minus one. And if you press enter on that, it will actually um, nullify the movement because it's going backwards while your hips are going forward, which means that your animation is now zeroed out. Um, which in practical terms means that now your dummy or your puppet it's um, running on the spot uh, which makes it much easier for you to see your animations and for you to get an animation looping this is obviously needs to be uh, reverted before exporting an animation into game in this case but uh, later on I'll show you a trick on how to actually kind of uh, uh, leave the data in the main control and still being able to export and do all the work that you need to do so now here I'm actually doing this uh, step that I call uh, animating with locators so what I'm doing is actually uh, since the character is still moving in world space it just looks like it's moving in, sp in on the spot I'm actually putting locators on the limbs because I want those limbs to look identical at the beginning and end of my loop so when I put the locator in the foot or in the leg um, or in the arm I want to make sure that that initial position is the same as my last position so I got that going and at this point I'm kind of thinking um, my arm is not really feeling right even though I'm snapping it to the locator so I need to actually maybe put it in um, world space because my hips are affecting my arms so right here the hips are obviously he's slouching to one side when he's running when you're making a ro running loop you need to make sure that uh, the running is as symmetrical as possible so um, after fixing the hips I decided to actually kind of uh, go in and work a little bit on the fingers make sure that everything is uh, loose or as natural as possible in the fingers get a little bit of a pose um, I'm not too sure yet if I'm going to actually kind of add a little uh, opening and closing of the hand a little bit while he's running I want to keep this as simple as possible because at the end of the day it's just a demo for you guys but uh, at this point I'm kind of like feeling it so I'm like okay cool having fun the rig is light and uh, I think the, the the cycle is starting to come together um, I can see the animation cycling nicely now so I need to actually work in the contacts I need to work on the rotation of the hips I need to work on a little bit on the rotation of the of the hands uh, it feels a bit broken the wrist so here I'm rectifying a little bit that uh, that wrist the elbow is a bit too uh, out so I'm rectifying that as well and then I'm rectifying the wrist um, according to the new uh, elbow position same thing goes for the other hand uh, adding a little bit of rotation as he's running just to add a little bit of overlap as he's going up and down up and down so he's starting to feel like he has some weight to him it's not the most interesting run in the world but looks convincingly enough uh, so here is the trick whenever you want to get the character off the spot you mute selected and that basically kills all the information from Z the, the information is still there it's just Maya is not reading it at this point so now you can see how your character actually moves uh, off the spot instead of being in the spot that will be your final result that's what you want so now I know that uh, my loop is working and I know that uh, my character is moving off the spot convincingly there's no sliding anywhere but um, I need to do the ultimate test which is uh, get uh, the character to move uh, indefinitely forward and uh, looping convincingly so before I do that I need to make sure that in every single controller that I go to 
that it's looping a hundred percent and uh, Maya has a tendency to flatten the tangents at the beginning and ends so I'm going in in every single controller and I'm making sure that that doesn't happen so at this point I'm thinking this looks pretty good I think every single controller is now looping correctly there's nothing really noticeable that I can see in terms of um, that stands out um, so now maybe it's time for that ultimate test which is making sure that uh, the character can uh, loop indefinitely uh, and the way I do it is by setting my curves to cycle to infinity with offset in the graph editor and as you shall see here in a second um, you'll be able to I'm just muting selecting here quickly just to make sure that uh, the carriage is moving off the spot and uh, here I'm adjusting the camera to make sure that you see that now the character cycles more than originally cycling which means that you can just cycle indefinitely and it will just go into the horizon just cycling this way and that's pretty much it all right got to the end of another video i like this face it's pretty cool i feel like i can uh, i can do things here it's great mocap is interesting because it's one of those things that only when you actually get into it and you start working with it you can massage it in a way that actually is very it's very nice it's very, like you can do a lot with it but you have to thread a line that is very thin because you have so much data animation data and the animation is already done for you so you're not making the animation so you have to kind of a play very carefully with the keys in order to not destroy the motion that was there and is normally very expensive to capture you have to kind of play with the motion so after a few years you actually get to a point that you can improve the motion capture instead of destroying the motion capture but you have to go through stages and most likely in the beginning there's going to be times over your career <laughs> you're going to make it worse than it was when you first received it. It happens a lot, it's completely normal, and it's part of the process. It is a nice medium to work in, you just have to bear in mind the animation is already made for you. You're not really creating anything, you're just manipulating animation. So you have hand key and you have mocap. Some people actually like to stay on one camp or the other. I think knowing both camps is actually the best you can do for yourself because having that flexibility of being able to work with both mediums, it will give you so much more as an animator. You will be able to actually work anywhere you want without having fear, not being able to handle intense motion capture, or maybe not being able to like create something from scratch by doing hand key. Make sure you learn both as much as you can so you become versatile and you become good at both. Thanks very much for the viewership of my last video. It was really popular, more popular than I ever expected really deeply humbled by the love that you guys are giving me with the comments and the likes and the subscriptions. Please feel free to continue to pass the word around about this channel, I'm only tiny. And uh, if you do want have any questions about motion capture or anything else for that matter, drop a comment as well about that. If you don't want to miss out on any of the videos, click that bell button. That will actually make sure that YouTube will notify you when I, I release a new, uh, a new video. And that's always good. So that's what we have for this week, guys. Thank you very much for joining me once again and for your viewership. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, stay well, stay safe. Peace.